how would the idea of a of a vaccine passport to to I prove anyway look? So we call it actually a vaccine certificate rather than a vaccine passport, Brian. The idea is that you'd have a, a fact about you. You'd have a, the fact that you've been vaccinated uh, associated with your face. And any time you wanted to gain access, say, to a, a ball game or, or premises, you would just authenticate your face and that would show that you were the rightful owner of a vaccine certificate. The great thing about this approach is there's no pri there's no PII uh, other than your face involved. You don't need to hand over your name and your date of birth. Don't need to show ID. So the idea is to is to reassure the guys who need to be sure that you're safe without without breaching your privacy. How would it link the face to the proof of vaccination without identification? So either when the vaccination first takes place, literally in a vaccination center, or later on, if there's some digital information available from a, a public health authority, you would, uh, you would enroll yourself to this scheme. So many public health authorities worldwide are preparing to provide um, vaccine certificates, which would typically be in the form of um, a barcode, uh, a secured barcode, which would uh, enable uh, the reader to be sure that a genuine vaccine certificate has been created within the records of the public health authority, uh, and then uh, the reader can be sure of it. It's, it'll be associated with your name, it'll be associated with your date of birth. What can then happen is that that's transferred to a much more privacy-respecting system to which you enroll your face. Get rid of the name, get rid of the date of birth. From now on, you just authenticate with your face. It's going to work differently in different countries because different countries have different public health uh, elect electronic records. At the moment, the World Health Organization is actually standardizing this so that not only will we be able to do this domestically, but also when we travel. Well, you can imagine, Andrew, and you've, you've mentioned the word privacy a number of times. I mean, you're in the UK, we're here in the US. You can already see, I'm sure, and have heard the uproar. People saying, no way. First off, a lot of people, maybe, I don't know, 30 to 40% of the population, at least here, aren't going to get vaccinated. Hard stop. They're not going to do it. Is that going to prevent them from getting into anything or anywhere they want to go? Because doctors will tell you if you've had COVID and you have the antigens, you're probably just as safe as anybody that's been vaccinated. So why shouldn't they be given a, a quote, passport as well? So I think this is really sensitive and delicate uh, legal, social, cultural ground for all of us. Uh, frankly, I'm not going to I'm not going to pine about this. I'm an engineer and a technologist. Our job is to put is to provide the technology that makes this easy, safe and private to use. How it's used and what the social limits on its use is, I think, is a matter for public debate. It's a matter for public, public for politicians, for civil society to decide. It, in some cases, it'll be a matter of the law. In Europe, we're governed by the GDPR, which you may know is one of the strictest privacy respecting mm -hmm. regimes in the world. So there are various things that actually you, you simply can't do. Um, in, in many contexts, it would actually be illegal to, allow, to prevent access, access to a service um, if someone didn't reveal their sensitive medical history and a vaccination certificate is effectively a piece of sensitive medical history. But I think they need yeah, to be a I kind public of, I kind of picture it, right. Andrew. It, I'm sure you're, you're probably, a, or at least were, a frequent traveler, like so many of our CNBC viewers are. And, you know, I use the CLEAR program as well. You put the fingerprints down, you stare into the thing. I've actually heard about businesses using that platform kind of as the vaccine passport as well. But that's a different product. You know, there are people who opt in and there are people who, who say, no, I'm not even going to do TSA pre-check here in the United States. Is that kind of how you view it? You're going to build the system for people that want to use it and feel comfortable, but there will be ways around it for those who simply don't want to do it. And by the way, their access to things may be limited, at least in the near term. I think that's absolutely essential. Look, the whole the whole basis for the way that we do things that I prove is social inclusion. So I, personally, I believe that these things mustn't be an instrument of social exclusion. I think it's got to be a question of choice. This has got to be about facilitating people who want to use it to have a slight to have an easier and simpler life. Um, I, I would be very uncomfortable if it became any kind of instrument of social exclusion. I think that would I think society wouldn't accept that and it would be unfair. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.